Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to find the integral of the cosecant of x. Now, there's a trick to this one, and if you don't know the trick, you'll be slaving over this one for a very long time because you probably won't be able to figure it out. You just have to take the benefit of others who figured this trick out before us. It turns out, if you're going to multiply this, the integrand here, by the following fraction, the cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x, cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x. In essence, we're multiplying the integrand by 1, but the very special one, it ends up being the cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x divided by the same. So when we now multiply this through, we'll get the following integrand. This now becomes equal to, multiply this times that, we get the cosecant square of x plus the cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. We still have a dx. And in the denominator, we also get the cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x. Now you tell yourself, did that improve things? Well, it turns out it did because the numerator happens to be almost the exact differential of the denominator. Let's find out. Let's take the denominator. For example, if we said let u is equal to the denominator, the cosecant of x, plus the cotangent of x, what would the u dx look like? Well, the u dx, of course, would be the derivative of this. Now, if we rewrite this as 1 over the sine of x, plus the cosine of x over the sine of x, and then we take the derivative of these, you'll find out that what we end up with is the numerator here. Almost the numerator. I think we might be out by negative sign. Let's find out. So the derivative of 1 over the sine of x, which is equal to the cosecant of x, will be equal to, well, we take the de denominator, the sine of x, times the derivative of the numerator, which is 0, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, which would be, let's see here, that would be the cosine of x, all divided by the denominator squared. And so we end up with, uh, let's see here, well, that would be the cotangent of x and the secant of x, which is what we have over here. And then here, this would be plus the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which would be negative sine of x minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all divided by the denominator squared. Now notice in the numerator we get the sine square of x, the negative sine square of x, minus the cosine square of x, which is basically equal to negative 1. So we have negative 1 over the sine square of x, which would be the negative cosecant square of x, which is the negative of that. So that's why we have almost the exact same result. So let's take a look here. So this would be equal to, this would become the negative, cosine over sine, and 1 over sine would be the cosecant of x times the cotangent of x, and then here we get minus 1 over the sine square of x, which is the cosecant square of x. Notice that is equal to exactly this except for the negative sign, which means this whole thing can then be changed into a minus 1 times the integral of du over u, and of course dx, that would be from make, taking this dx and move it to the other side, we end up with basically that. So now what all we have to do is integrate this, so this becomes equal to negative times the natural log of, that would be the cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x. And then if we um, want to put, get rid of this negative sign, we can put the negative sign up here, rewrite this, so this could be written as the natural log of, the cosecant of x would be 1 over the sine of x, plus the cosine of x over the sine of x, and notice that both denominators are the same, which means we can flip over that integral, or I'm, what's inside the brackets here, so this is equal to the natural log of the sine of x, divided by 1 plus the cosine of x. And of course, we have a constant of integration, so let's go ahead and add that as well. Now, we could leave it like that and say we're done, 
But if you look at an integral table, you'll probably not see this as the result of that integral. And then you wonder, did I do it correctly or not? Well, you probably did. You just don't have the exact same format. To get the same format, what we could do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So we can say that this is equal to the natural log of the sine of x times 1 minus the cosine of x divided by 1 plus the cosine of x multiplied times 1 minus the cosine of x. And, of course, the constant of integration. You say, well, why in the world did we do that? Well, let's see what we end up when we multiply this out. This is equal to the, the natural log of, this becomes the sine of x, and then minus the sine of x times the cosine of x, and then the denominator will end up with 1 minus the cosine squared of x. Plus the constant of integration, and of course the denominator could be changed into the sine of x squared, so this can be written as the natural log of the sine of x minus the sine of x times the cosine of x divided by the sine of x squared, Oop, better put the square there, plus the constant of integration. Now, what we could do is, of course, divide one of the sine of x into the numerator. If we do that, we get the following, the natural log of, and so that would mean we get um, 1 minus the cosine of x divided by the sine of x, like this, and then... If we uh, separate these two, I guess we could do it like this. So this becomes equal to the natural log of 1 divided by the sine of x. Well, that would be equal to the cosecant of x minus the cosine of x divided by that would be the cotangent of x. And you quite often will see the result of that integral, the integral of the cosecant of x, as the natural log of the cosecant of x minus the cotangent of x plus the constant of integration. Matter of fact, in most integral tables, they don't even write the plus c. And then finally, you can look at this and go, oh, well, wait a minute. This is equal to the tangent of half the angle. So this could also be written as a natural log of the tangent of half the angle plus a constant of integration. And sometimes you'll see it that way as the result. And that's how it's done.